Another tool of capital budgeting is the profitability index. The profitability index looks at the ratio of the present value of the future cash flows divided by the cost of the investment. And what we're looking for is we're looking for one that's greater than one. So if the profitability index is greater than one, we want to accept the project. If it's less than one, we want to reject the project. And if it's equal to one, we're indifferent. That is, you're getting a fair return on, your, on the capital you invest. Now, you'll notice that this looks a little bit similar to net present value. In net present value, we took the present value of the cash flows and subtracted the cost. Here, we're dividing by the cost. In net present value, we were looking for a positive number, and a positive number is the same as having a profitability index that's greater than one. We like the idea of the profitability index because it allows us to rank projects. It essentially tells you, you know, your bang per buck. How much are you getting per each dollar invested? So let's let's work through. I've got some numbers here. I've got three different projects listed, and let's work out the profitability index for each one of these, and then we'll figure out uh, how this works. Okay, so. Here we have, in the first case, for project A, we're simply going to have, all right, we're going to take the present value of the cash flows, or we can, well, let me do this. So I'm going to use my cash flow worksheet. So I'm going to take 20, and that's my future value, and then N is my um, number of periods, so there's one period. All right, I need a cost of capital, so let me put this in here. I need an interest rate, and I'm going to put in an interest rate of 12%. And so let's put in 12 for this. And the cost here, well, let me just, uh, so that's going to be equal to, let's see, compute the present value, so that's 17857 uh, and let's divide that by 10 actually negative 10 okay so we're going to get 1.78. Okay, so that's the profitability index here. Let's check out the profitability index for the second, uh, for project B. All right, so I need to clear my time value of money workspace. I have $20, and that's going to appear two times. The interest rate is 12 and I'm going to compute my present value, so that's uh, 3380. So let me divide that by minus 15. And I get a profitability index of 2.25. And let's do the last project here. Again, clear your time value of money workspace. We have 5000 and that happens to be a payment. Now, they don't all have to be the same. I've made it this way. It makes it easier for me to compute, but they don't all have to be the same cash flows. All right, so this is an annuity. I put in my, my 5000 I have three periods. I said we have an interest rate of 12%, and I compute the present value, and I get 12 uh, 12,009 divided by 10,000. And so I get a profitability index of 1.2. 1.20. So if we were to rank these, 
rank based on the profitability index, this would be ranked 1, 2, and 3. So if we were choosing to do the projects, we would want to choose B first, A second, and C third. And you can see that essentially for every dollar invested in B, you're bringing back $2.25 in present value terms. For C, you're only bringing back $1.20. But this may give us a, a misleading solution because if you look at these three projects, they have different sizes. A and B are kind of close in size, so probably not a real problem there. And in fact, B, the bigger project, has the higher profitability index. But how about C? C, you're spending quite a bit more money. Your profitability index is lower. But intuitively, and we'll do the calculation in a second, you're probably going to increase the value of the firm more here. This would be a better project if you could scale it up. If you could do this, you know, six or seven or eight times and get these cash flows, this would be a better project. But you can't always scale up a project like that. And should you do a tiny little project that has a great return, but actually doesn't add much value to the company? So let's work out the NPV of all three of these. And we can use, let's use our, our cash flow worksheet. Remember, when you clear the cash flow worksheet, you hit cash flow, and then you have to hit second clear work. So that clears everything that's in there. So the first one is uh, we have minus 10, and then our first cash flow is 20. Don't forget to hit enter. Did I hit enter before? Nope, I forgot to hit enter, so enter. Okay, this is okay. Frequency is 1, it just occurs one time. And we can hit our NPV. And we're going to put in that interest rate of 12%. Enter. And then we can go down and hit Compute. And we get an NPV of 7.86. All right positive NPV, we want to do the project, and, and we knew it was a positive NPV because you had a profitability index greater than, greater than one. All right, let's do the second project. Cash flow, and again, we can clear everything here. Second, clear worksheet. We have, what, minus 15. Enter, and then we're going to have 20 as our cash flow. And the frequency is 2. We get two of these. And again, we hit NPV. We put in the interest rate of 12. And then we can scroll down and then hit Compute. We get an NPV of 18.80. Okay, so this is consistent with what we had before. This, was, this one was ranked above this one. All right, let's see what happens with the final, the final project. Again, clear our worksheet. Let's see, does it have a higher NPV? Intuitively, we would think we would because it's a much bigger project. Enter. And we have three of these cash flows. And I'm going to put in 12% again. Okay. And compute. And the NPV here is 2,000 and 9 and 16 cents. Okay, so again, if we were going to rank these based on NPV, we would rank Project C first, Project B second, and Project C third. So while the, while the profitability index can be useful, all right, here it gives you a misleading result. You do B first and then C. Now usually you use the, the profitability index when you have a constraint on how much money you're going to spend. And the idea is to do the, the, um, the projects that have the highest bang per buck. But if you have limited resources and you can, if you can afford to do this, if you have $10,000 to invest, 
it would be silly to do this one and this one and then leave all that extra money on the table because you don't have enough money to do project C. It'd be better if you just did C. If you can do C, B, and A, that's fine. But you really want to do the one that has the highest NPV. And again, our rule of thumb here is, you know, this is a pretty good project, right? We accounted for risk through our interest rate, through the cost of capital of 12%. If it were a riskier project, we could use a higher interest rate. We've taken the time value of money. We've accounted for all the cash flows. Now, project A only has one cash flow here. Project C has three, but we've accounted for all the cash flows. All right, but we have not accounted for the amount of value creation for the firm by using the profitability index. Okay, NPV does that, and that's why NPV is still a better method to use. Again, this is a method that oftentimes will be used. If, if all the projects have roughly the same cost, then you're going to find that the profitability index gives you about the same solution. If they have exactly the same cost, you're going to get the same solution as you would using NPV. But if there are, there's a project that's much larger and the smaller projects can't be scaled up, you're much better off doing the larger project if you can afford it because it increases the value of the firm much more.